One of the things people often wonder about is how is the battery degradation on the uh, Tesla Model 3 uh, over a number of years? So four years ago, when the this car was brand new, I drove from the Niagara region up to Algonquin Park, which was about a 300 kilometer drive uh, to get to the Huntsville Supercharger. And I have a recording of that time of how much battery capacity was left, what the efficiency of the car was, and how many uh, uh, kilometers were remaining, and how many watt hours the car used uh, to travel that distance. Four years later, and a few months, I took a second drive from uh, same place, uh, although I took uh, a different highway, which was only about five kilometers further, um, and again, could calculate the number of watt hours used and how much capacity is left. And from that, we can estimate the amount of degradation in the battery over four years and a couple of months. The weather was very similar in both cases. Uh, it was a little bit warmer on the second drive by about five degrees Celsius. So, but that should all be accounted for um, in the total watt hours per kilometer that the car is using. So let's uh, get into it. We'll uh, re um, review the uh, supercharger footage from both times and uh, see how much degradation we had. Okay, back in 2018 when the car was new and we took this trip, uh, let's, I took a screenshot of the screen when I was supercharging and let's unpack some of the information that's on the screen. First of all, you can see that uh, since the last charge, which was a charge to 100% prior to leaving, for Algonquin Park, uh, there was 46 kilowatt hours that has been used. And our efficiency is 156 watt hours per kilometer. We can also see on the screen that we added 27 kilometers uh, at what the time when this photo was taken and that there's 202 kilometers left. I also know that the distance traveled uh, was along uh, non-toll roads uh, and it was 295 kilometers total distance. So if we take that 295 kilometers and multiply it by the efficiency of 156 watt hour per kilometer, we get the 46,020 watt hours or 46 kilowatt hours being reported as used. But there's still unused capacity left in the battery. Let's just take that value and put it in memory for the moment. If we want to see how much power is left on the battery, we can say, well, the display is showing 202 kilometers range rema remaining. We've added the 27 kilometers before this picture was taken, meaning we arrived with 175 kilometers of rated range left, which is based on an EPA efficiency for the Model 3 of one of a 2018 Model 3 of 149 watt hours per kilometer. So if we have 175 kilometers left times 149 watt hours per kilometer left, means we have 26 kilowatt hours left. And if we add that to the battery uh, um, capacity that was used to go the, the, the distance, means we had a total pack capacity of 72 kilowatt hours. Um, so let's just clear memory and save that for later. And now let's go to our more recent trip four years later and uh, see what the capacity is today. The Huntsville Supercharger. And just to look at some stats here, we went exactly 300 kilometers. Uh, we were fully charged to 100%. We're now at 26% which it estimates to be 125 kilometers remaining. Um, it was highway speeds all the way. The whole drive, you know, 300 kilometers is all between 100, 110. Traffic goes up to 110, 120. And uh, so highway speeds driven the whole way, uh, keeping with the traffic flow. And um, we are have 26% remaining. And now we're gonna plug into the supercharger and pick up some charge to last us for our uh, few days in the uh, Algonquin Park. Okay, so about four years ago, as you recall, we got 72 
kilowatt hours as ba our battery capacity. Looking at four years later at the screenshot on the screen now, uh, I did take a toll road this time and therefore uh, saved some time uh, getting up to the park. Uh, it, it was a cost of five kilometers further distance than the non-toll road that I took years earlier. And the result was that the average commuting speed was higher on the toll road compared to the non-toll roads. And you can see here that the average energy use on the screen is 165 watt hours uh, per kilometer compared to the 156 uh, four years earlier. So if we take that 165 watt hour per kilometer and multiply it by the 300 kilometers that we traveled, you can see that we used 49,500 watt hours or 49.5 kilowatt hours of total energy to travel that 300 kilometers. And you can see on the screen, the Model 3 is showing the 49 kilowatt hours there. And that's how it gets that value. So remembering that number and calculating the remaining battery capacity, the remaining capacity shows 26%. Um, you'll see in, the, in a future clip that there was actually 125 kilometers remaining, representing that roughly 26%. And if we multiply that by the EPA rated efficiency of the 2018 Long Range Model 3 of 149 watt hours per kilometer, you can see that there was 18 uh, 625 watt hours remaining in the battery. Now there's less than four years prior, again, because we went on a toll road, we traveled faster, so our efficiency was lower than going you know, some stop and go traffic that we had four years prior. So our average energy consumption was higher and that's why we used more and that's why there's also less left here. And if we take that and add it to the 49,500 that we spent getting to the supercharger, we see now the capacity is uh, 68, 125 watt hours in the battery. And if we divide that by the, from four years prior, when it was 72,095, we see uh, that we have 0.9449 of the battery based on this calculation. If we add that to one, multiply by 100. This is estimating about a 5.5% degradation, looking at it this way. Uh, this is, there is some error in this calculation um, because uh, for one thing, uh, the 26%, the remaining that it shows here and the previous uh, four years ago, the percent remaining is an estimate. The closer you get to zero, the closer to truth you will be. So there would be error uh, just in that, in the BMS calculating what's remaining. If you went further down, you might find this a percent plus or minus, better or worse, something like that. But the lower you get when you do this test, the more accurate it'll be. Another factor to consider is the internal resistance of the battery pack. Um, you know, uh, power is I squared R, so for a given uh, internal resistance, which would be higher now than it was four years ago, but also by driving, the, just by the fact that we were driving faster, the current draw from the battery would have been higher. And then because of the I squared R uh, formula for power, we would have had more heat loss in the battery as well. So this efficiency would look better if we had driven on an average speed slower, taking the non-toll route, for example, averaging closer to 156 watt hours per kilometer like before would have lowered the internal resistance losses, which I'm not sure if Tesla's trying to take those into account. They would have to be measuring the internal resistance of the battery. It's possible that they might do that. The BMS might be doing that. I'm not sure. But it's, um, it could also, it's just a loss, a heat loss within the battery that gets vented in the summer out. Uh, in the winter and the heat pump models, it can get be reclaimed as cabin heat. But in this case, in summer, it would have just been lost heat, uh, except for maybe using some to precondition for supercharging. But... Um, so that would have been another loss that would have made this look a bit uh, probably higher, would look, make, it, make the loss look higher than it is. I know that uh, the BMS usually calculates that I have about 481 kilometers remaining uh, when, I don't, when I'm fully charged compared to when the car was new at 499. So it's, the BMS is typically calculating for me about a 3.6% loss. So 
let's say we're somewhere between 3.6 and 5.5. Um, basically, uh, it's been a little over four years since the age of the car. If you look at about 1.2% loss per year, this was probably somewhere between 1% and 1.3% a year loss. Uh, for 10 years at this rate, and it supposedly will uh, slow down, you get the most loss when the battery is young and then you enter a stage where it slows down a bit. 10 years in at this rate, I'm looking at maybe, um, you know, uh, over f like in 5.5%, uh, say worst case, over 4.2 years, over 10 years, it might be a 13% loss, which is, I think, great. So there you have it. That's the capacity loss that I measured on this trip. And uh, uh, let's take a look at a little bit more of the supercharging. Uh, experience. Okay, supercharging beginning. Ramping up. It did precondition for supercharging for uh, quite a ways out from uh, our destination, letting the battery pack warm up to try to take the maximum charge. This is a 150 kilowatt supercharger station. Uh, it's not the, it's version 2, it's not a version 3, which are 250 kilowatt. So, here we are, we're sitting around 142, 143 kilowatts, uh, adding 980 some odd kilometers per hour range. We've already added one kilowatt hour. And we're just gonna head over to uh, a Metro store here, pick up some ice for the cooler, and uh, grab a few things and let this thing, uh, it shouldn't take very long at all to charge up. The time now is, uh, 10.53, I guess maybe we started at 10.52 a.m. And uh, we'll come back in a bit and see where we are. We're sitting at 141, which is uh, 142 still, which is a pretty good rate. Okay, it is now 11.27. Um, just how long it took us to go into the nearby uh, grocery store, pick some ice, uh, and some fruits, vegetables, load up our cooler, and we're already at 92%, charging at 27 kilowatts, but we're gonna take off now and head into the park, and uh, we should be good to go. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, the degradation over about uh, 4.2 years, uh, my 2018 long range Tesla Model 3 has been about, um, between three and a half to five and a half percent. I measured five and a half uh, percent on the on this trip. Mind you, again, it could be a little bit high because of the uh, the different route that was uh, driven both times and the, the uh, power heat loss due to internal resistance of the battery being higher on the second drive compared to the first. The BMS from Tesla is calculating typically around three and a half, four percent. So, you know, I think approximately one to one and a quarter percent a year uh, loss in battery capacity. Um, if that were to continue over 10 years, you be, might be looking at 13% total capacity loss. There's no change in performance, acceleration, performance, um, all that stuff is exactly the same. So uh, I think uh, it's really good. Every car design be it uh, an ICE car, electric car, has uh, components that will age over time, and um, the, each technology is a little different. But four years in, about 20 kilometers less is not even noticeable. There was a time in this car when um, uh, there was an update pushed out that was supposed to have increased the efficiency. I never really saw that uh, happen in my car. My car always charged when it was new between 499 and maybe 505 kilometers <clears throat> when it was uh, brand new. And also the energy graph, if I just flip over to that to show you that, uh, has also not really changed over time. So here we're looking at the energy graph on my Tesla Model 3. Now you can see that uh, the solid line shown across here 
is the rated efficiency, which I was quoting as 149 watt hours per kilometer. That's what the car was sold at, and it never really changed in this graph uh, as well. That like, the car did not. Uh, this graph does not show a lowering or an improvement on that efficiency. It's been the same ever since I had it. So here you can see I've been driving at 136 for the last 50 kilometers, and the solid line above is around 149. If I change to 25 kilometers, the average is project, projected at 147, the dotted line, it's still below the 149. And at 10 kilometers, 151 is slightly above the 149 solid line. So that shows, I just wanted to show um, that um, the efficiency didn't really change much on this car. So I think these calculations of battery degradation are quite accurate. They're also quite good. And um, yeah, so all good news. If you're worried about battery degradation in a Tesla, I don't think you really need to be. And just some comments on uh, supercharging speed. You'll notice uh, we came in with about 26% battery life remaining. Went in to get some supplies for the camping trip, picked up some ice and supplies for the cooler. Came back out, about 35 minutes had passed and we'd gone from 26% to 92% state of charge in 35 minutes. So again, uh, if we had been at a version three supercharger on a road trip, they're a bit faster. We probably would have shaved five or 10 minutes off that charge time. Uh, also coming in at a lower state of charge than 26% would enable the battery to absorb charge a little bit faster. We were pretty close to the maximum for this charging station. We were pulling 142 to 143 kilowatt out of a 150 kilowatt charger. But again, if you came in with a lower state of charge, 10% or even lower, and into a version three supercharger, you could be pulling close to 250 for a while and then it would taper down and that would lower your overall charging time. I have seen on this car coming in with a very low state of charge, um, picking up about uh, from like 5% to 55% in under 15 minutes um, on the low end. The top end of the battery, it starts to slow down and take longer to charge. So typically you charge up not full and then continue to your next charging station. You may go to 60, 70, 80 percent and then go to the next charging station and charge again. Operate in that lower portion of the battery between 10 and uh, 80 percent and you pick up much faster uh, charge rates. It's the last 20, 30 percent that take the most time to charge. But again, uh, we needed 35 minutes to pick up our supplies and we were already back to 92 percent. That was enough to last us the three days in the park driving around, doing hiking and canoeing and stuff like that. And then driving all the way back, 80 kilometers back to the supercharger in Huntsville. Uh, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one on Electric Pathways.